this is kind of the beginning of a journey that I've been dealing with for quite a while and I just wanted to document this in my life because I think it is going to be very um, monumental. Essentially the only really solution to it is surgery. Hello everyone, welcome back to my room <laughs> where I film all my videos. So today I have a lot to talk about so let's just get right into it. So as you're watching this video, it will be one year since I had my Chiari malformation decompression surgery and if you have watched my previous videos and are just keeping up with me I really appreciate it I was just shocked at you know all of the views that my videos got and the comments honestly the comments it just meant everything to me just because there were so many people that were going through the same thing I was and I was able to connect with people on you know a different level and give advice and it was really great that I was able to, you know, provide that space for those people and provide a video really going into depth of the process for others. Because, you know, when I was about to get my surgery, I was searching on YouTube as well and I couldn't really find anything. So I'm just so happy that my videos provided some type of, you know, comfort and a space where they could feel like they weren't alone and I think it really helps to see other people going through you know the same struggles you are and just being able to see what is to come what's expected of this huge step in your life that you're about to take and I think it's super important to show you know the ins and outs and the behind the scenes and what leads up to it what comes after so um yeah I really appreciate you know everyone who watched and who found it helpful and I had a lot of people reach out to me on Instagram saying that they found my video and you know messaging me for further questions or just asking me how I'm doing and I think that is just super awesome and that is why I wanted to make those videos and that is why I so appreciate the internet and just having that space to be able to connect with people around the world you know i had people from australia from different states in the united states contact me <laughs> like asking me these questions and you know we've kind of formed like a little online friendship and i think that is just so so cool so let's get down to the nitty-gritty i just kind of want to give you guys an update on everything that i've been going through this whole year the last update i gave you guys was the month after my surgery so that was in january <laughs> and that was before obviously everything happened in the world with covid and everything else that's happened in 2020 and i just kind of want to give you a run through and how covid's affected me and how it's affected you know my healing process and everything else that month after i was feeling pretty good you know i was feeling super hopeful as most of us were with 2020 um i was having really no issues i wasn't in much pain which was good um, uh, my scar and my incision was healing really well. My hair was growing back. Um, I can insert some pictures, but it was growing back super fast and that made me super happy. Um, you know, I was spending time with family and friends and I, um, went back to work in February and fa uh, flash forward a month into March and then that is when you know COVID hit so I was only working for about a month in the office luckily I'm super grateful um my job I'm able to work remote so I've had my job throughout this whole year 
So I just switched to working from home as a lot of people have this year. I can get into that a little bit later, how, you know, the whole working from home has affected me. Um, but I just want to say I'm super grateful because I know a lot of people weren't as lucky. I want to touch on some of the symptoms that never really went away and some new ones that I had experienced throughout the year. Some symptoms that stuck around. I still get headaches to this day, probably even worse maybe before than before my surgery. I get headaches probably three to five times a week. It really depends. And they've moved. So my headaches used to be focused here in the back. And since my surgery, they've moved towards more the front, like in my temple area. And, um, yeah, they're, they're just bad. And I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, my whole environment that I've been in this year and everything else and just being stuck inside, not getting as much fresh air as I used to and not getting as much sunlight as I used to. Being in a dimly lit room has really affected that as well. I still have a bit of a cloudy head. I still feel just kind of like I'm walking on air a lot of the time. Um, I still have blurry vision, tunnel vision, especially when I'm driving. Um, I do get like clogged up a lot, so it feels like my ears are plugged up a lot of the times or there's like water in them. And one thing that I've developed and that has gotten worse over this year is the ringing in my ears. So since my surgery, I have gotten tinnitus and I would have it here and there before my surgery, but it has really just gotten so bad <laughs> over this year. And I now have it every day. I wake up with ringing in my ears. I go to sleep with ringing in my ears. It's kind of like a white noise at this point. And sometimes I don't notice it, but obviously when I think about it, I notice it like right now I can hear it. <laughs> so it is a constant and I've talked to some doctors and they've said that could be from just the trauma that my brain has gone through uh, from the surgery. And I did go get my hearing checked with um, the doctor and my hearing is perfectly normal, but she did refer me to another doctor to help control my tinnitus. So I have yet to schedule with her, but um, that will be happening soon. Now let's talk about the good. So the one thing, one thing <laughs> that has improved since my surgery are my pressure headaches, which you know what, if that's the one thing that's going to be gone and be fixed from all of this, I'm all good with it because those were the one thing that was affecting me the most. Um, and if you know, if you suffer with Chiari, you know what I'm talking about. The headaches that start in the back of your head and just rush to the front and just make your whole head throb and it just puts you out. You can't move, you can't speak, you can't, you can barely open your eyes, just horrible. And you know, that would come on with various different things. You know, if I was laughing, if I sneeze really hard or if I cough really hard, if I'm going to the bathroom and I'm pushing a little too hard, you know, if I'm at concerts, singing, dancing, just whenever I was exerting a lot of energy and putting a lot of like pressure onto my body, that's when they would come about. But since my surgery, I haven't had one. Well, I've maybe had like a little bit of one, but this whole year I haven't been affected by it and for that I'm very grateful you know that was the one big thing that I think I wanted resolved and it happened so although you know I still have other symptoms and I've maybe developed a few more symptoms than before that one big thing is gone and you know what, I'm thankful for that. Sometimes I think like, oh man, you know, what if I didn't have the surgery? And 
like what if I felt better than I do now if I never went through with it you know is was it a mistake because obviously it cannot be reversed um and I try not to think about that because obviously it's been done and there's nothing I can do there's only the only thing I can do is figure out solutions moving forward I just try to think like you know what going into it my biggest thing was what if I get the surgery and it changes my life for the better and I'm glad I did it because now I know the answer to the what if and if it wasn't what, is, what I was expecting that's okay I'm just glad that I did it and that it's helped something and now I'm able to help others you know give advice to others share my story um, and it's not over you know I'm working with a lot of different specialists um, I'm seeing a neurologist now to help me with my headaches and migraines um, my surgeon actually referred her to me so and I know she's a really good doctor so she's prescribed me medication and this was recent so I have yet to start it but I'm really hoping it helps um, you know I'm seeing a rheumatologist and she's helping me as well with my autoimmune disorders because I have ulcerative colitis and she thinks that I may have another autoimmune disorder that really affects my whole body well-being and all the other slew of symptoms that I feel. So I'm getting all of that under control and I think that just makes me feel really grateful that I have these people, you know, supporting me and that I even have these specialist doctors that I'm able to go to and I'm able to see and that there is, you know, medication out there that can help me. So I saw my surgeon a few months ago, I believe it was in September or October, and I saw him, that was the first time I saw him um, since like the month after my surgery so it was kind of like our last meeting together so he um, wanted me to get another MRI done since I hadn't had one since my surgery and so I did that and we took a look at my MRI scans and just to see the difference of you know the before and after shots let me tell you it was crazy to see you could clearly see the difference of the bone poking into my skull and I will insert a clip um, right now to show you guys it's just it's insane like when you actually see it like basically it's just crazy to realize like that's what my that's what's happening inside here like that is what happened right here all right here is the two photos side by side obviously before after and I mean just look at this difference I mean clearly this bone is just poking into my cerebellum and look they completely just took off like I don't know if it's a few inches I'm sure I mean I don't know I I think it's just insane to look at just to see how much more room there is now here is just amazing and he went over everything and he says look like everything looks great there's nothing I can do more as a surgeon for you I did everything I did we can't go any further with anything you know a second surgery is off the table everything looks good and that's when he said, you know, I really think you need to see this neurologist to help you with your headaches and migraines. So that's when he referred me to her. I think that was just reassuring for me that, you know, there's nothing else surgery wise that he could do. And I'm also very thankful because I know a lot of people have this surgery multiple times. I'm thankful there's no more surgery to be done. And now it's just up to these other doctors to help me figure out my other symptoms. I want to talk about how 
amazing everyone has been online. I kind of touched on it earlier, but I feel like, I don't know, I just feel like I've created a little community of people on my YouTube and in my Instagram of people who are going through the same thing as I am. And like I said earlier, like I've made little online friends who are going through the same things as me and giving them advice is just super awesome and being able to know that there's people around the world who are going through this, you know, we're, we're just all in this together and support is the number one thing that you need from this. Another thing that was the biggest thing for me going into surgery was them having to shave my hair. <laughs> um, you guys have seen in pre previous videos and I can show on here as well, insert a little clip of my shaven head. And that was one of the biggest things I was worried about because I love my hair, you know, that's my, it's like my thing. And I was freaking out, but my hair just, it grew back so fast. I don't know why I was worried. It grew back so fast. Um, I had gotten a trim on my hair um, in September and already my hair um, from the area was like grown down to here. So it's seriously, it's almost to the length that it is now. And I will show you guys and I'll show you my scar as well. But I don't know why I was worried. It grows back fast. So if you are having to get a surgery where you have to get your hair shaved, don't worry. It will grow back. It it has taken a year. I mean, that's a while, but it's just hair and it grows back. Thankfully, that happens. I'm going to show you the incision spot and the scar and everything. Okay guys, so here is the hair that's grown back. As you can see, it's like, it's so long. <laughs> it's probably almost halfway to my normal length of hair. So here is my incision. I really hope you can see. Okay, so here's what it looks like. As you can see, it's all the way healed. Where is it? Right here. It's all the way healed and you can barely even see it. So here's a year after surgery, guys. This is what it will look like. And your hair will be grown out to here. I want to keep this short and sweet, so I'm going to give you my takeaways right now from everything. I'm glad I did the surgery and I'm glad I found a surgeon who was so awesome and just very reputable. I think that's my number one suggestion. Really shop around for your doctors because I had seen a previous one and I didn't like him. And then I found my surgeon and I knew it was the right fit. By the way, my doctor is Dr. Andrew Nguyen and he is um, in San Diego, he works for UCSD Health, and I've actually had someone who watched my video go to the same doctor, and I believe she will be getting surgery pretty soon. So I just think that's so awesome. Number two, I haven't improved much over this year, but the healing process isn't over. It might take longer, who knows, but regardless, I'm just still glad I did it and I'm glad that there are other people out there trying to help me. Number three, I'm so glad I found a community online. I'm so happy there are other people out there going through the same thing I was and people I can relate to and reach out to and I'm also really happy that other people found me and I want to end that on I started my own Instagram for my chronic illness journey. So I have obviously Chiari malformation and I have ulcerative colitis. And those are two chronic illnesses, meaning illnesses that last longer than three months and I will likely have for the rest of my life and that most likely do not have a cure. 
so <laughs> that being said i started my own instagram and i would really appreciate if you guys would go ahead and give it a follow it's called um at steph the chronically ill and yeah go on there i'm going to be posting about my journey and i would really appreciate if you give it a follow support me you can message me on there if you have any questions about carrying malformation or anything else really and yeah i just want to continue to grow that online presence and the online community and i really want to shout you guys out as well so if you want to share your story um i can put, post it on there and share it with everyone else i want to thank you all for keeping up with me watching my videos and please reach out to me if you have any questions and i want to say that i'm so sorry to anyone who was affected by covid this year i know it's been really hard for everyone and i'm especially sorry to anyone who lost a loved one um i know it must be super hard and i can't even imagine what you are going through and I know COVID has affected us as well. I mean, us Kiari warriors, it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of anxiety and stress that we've had to go through and that doesn't make our symptoms any better. And I can attest that, you know, being in my room almost constantly working on my computer, staring at a screen in a dimly lit room, it's hard. And I know a lot of people have gone through the same thing. So. I just want to say just keep going keep pushing stick through it we're gonna get through it i just want to say make sure to follow me on the instagram i'll link it down below so you can go ahead and go there or you can go to my personal page whatever works um if you want to message me on anything thank you again and it's been a journey it's been a crazy year and I'm sending all my love to all of you guys. Have a great Christmas and a holiday season, and we'll see what comes in 2021. Bye. <laughs>